Gagadelsky, open up questions. Coach, coming off uh, the win against the, or not the one win against the Michigan series against Michigan, uh, coming against Minnesota, as John just said, another memorable team. Just, I'm interested to hear, do you find anything noticeable, noticeably different about those two teams? Is there anything you need to prepare for a little bit differently? Against Minnesota? Well, there is, but, um, but we, yes, but we prepare more for what, what we need to do. So I don't know if uh, we don't focus on the other team so much as we focus on what we have to do. But as John mentioned, the similarities is we're facing the number one team in the nation second straight week. That's fine. That's what you get in the Big Ten. And that's what we're going to be facing for the rest of the year. Uh, knowing that your team lost to Minnesota in the Big Ten uh, tournament last year, how much of a spark? I mean, I hope not because I hope that we have a spark against every team in the Big Ten and every team in, in the nation. We, we, we really try hard to approach every, every game the same, and this is no exception. However, um, I don't think it, we need to remind the guys that that was the last game we played last year, and we, there was, you know, we had lessons to be learned from that game specifically. And how exciting is the challenge of going to Mary Yeah, that's why, that's why all of our student athletes come to Penn State to play in the Big Ten because that's what you get week in, week, week out in this league, and it is very exciting, and we'll never take it for granted. I, th I think it's awesome. I think it's what makes this league incredibly special. Going into Michigan, you talked about having not such quantitative goals, but rather qualitative goals. Going into Minnesota, obviously you guys are excited. It's another number one team we've mentioned before. Um, how are you guys keeping that, um, like, sorry, keeping those goals in mind without focusing on, on numbers? So when I meant, when I said quantitative, like there's, other than just the score, there's certain things that we look at consistently, and I feel like we can quantitative, meaning I think we can put numbers to them and we can, we can, we can evaluate how good we were. We are at certain things of our process, regardless whether who we play or the result. So that's what I meant by that. So I'm not sure uh, in terms of when you said qualitative. I, I still think that's that's how we approach things, regardless of the end result. Um, there's there's things that we look at to evaluate and judge how we how we performed in certain areas, and that's the way we are, and that's that's how we do things. So um, even though we won Friday night, there's there's a lot of things that we that regardless of the end score that we looked at that we did very, very well. I know we came back and tied it up in regulation, but for the first two periods and 11 and a half minutes, boy, you can point to a lot of things and you can quantitate those things that we did not do very well. And that's what I talked about. The question was, are we looking at Minnesota? Those things, we first have to look at ourselves and improve that. Uh, Coach, so, you know, you got kind of, you know, those freshmen and really anybody that was able to be there this weekend for the series got kind of spoiled with the roar zone and the huh. crowd behind you. But now that you're facing another number one team, you know, in the state of hockey, like, what do you, what do, you do when you go and face, like, kind of the opposite end of the spectrum yeah. where it's a great home crowd, but it's in a different arena? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing our response because you're right. We are so spoiled here. I mean, it is an incredibly fun atmosphere, number one, but it's motivating as well. It's helpful is very helpful, but it's an absolute blast and it's fun. And um, you're right, uh, this will be a different experience for us, but looking forward to it. And I'm, we're curious to see how re we respond. Hey, Coach, you talk about the response, you know, after playing so well, for a lot of the parts, obviously maybe at the beginning of the game too, not as well. How do you proceed to keep that play up, to keep playing yeah. at that high level and not having a drop off after maybe having such a big win against Michigan in the first game especially? Yeah, that's the challenge. That's why, from a previous question, like the preparation is is not how we like. It's not that we're now pre preparing against this team. It's how we prepare and we look at every game and, and regardless of who we are going to play, boy, we received a lot of information this week about what we have to get better at and and it's not just it's not X's and O's. It's more mentality and it's easy to say, but to really get, have for that to really stick in, like you have to have great leadership that really understands it and then not only speaks it, but does it. And, and so it's a process. Again, you can't have just one, we can't have one experience about, geez, we didn't really come out as well as we did Friday. Well, let's have this meeting and okay, we're done now. 
it's not how it works. Like you, you really have to understand why we weren't at our best at the start, and then, and then it, it's a lot more than just talking about it. You really have to go out and do it. So it's not just one thing, but it's a great experience to have, and we, uh, I, I sure hope we learn from it. This is a similar question, but sort of going off of that. You, on Saturday after the game, you talked about the loss being a good learning experience. Uh, how, I guess, far do you think you guys have come since that to understand what you've learned, what you need to do better for this next series, just moving forward in general? From Saturday night, just this last Saturday night? I mean, I thought that today's meeting and practice uh, and the conversations with individuals were, were a good indication that we understand that there's – we're certainly nowhere near where we have to be. So that makes me optimistic. But I don't think we'll really know until we're put in that position again. So I think, I, I, I feel confident we're further ahead. But until we get in that opportunity again, I certainly can't be, I can't be certain. Coach, you've been talking a lot about uh, the team's sh uh, struggles at times with, on the power play. Coming into this weekend, are you feeling any more optimistic about how the team might perform over the weekend? Not yet, we haven't worked on it yet. but. We have tomorrow. Guy, um, Ashton Calder is the guy who has came into the season with a lot of experience, third most uh, games played among um, college hockey players. What has that kind of experience meant to this team in the course of? Yeah, I think it's been really good. Um, and it's been good for the coaching staff too. Um, he's a he's a very mature. Um, he is. His compass is pointing the right way. He's here for the right reasons. He he did, I guarantee he did as much research on us as we did on him. Uh, his decision to come here wasn't a flippant one. He, he knows what he wants. He knows what he wants out of this. He knows what kind of environment he wants to be in. He knows what kind of opportunities he wants. He's, he's a real, it was a real, I got to tell you, it was a pleasure recruiting him um, because he's, he's really a very mature young man who knows what he wants and is very honest. And so I can say that all the experience that you talked about, I think, is benefit to the team, to the players. I think it's also a benefit to the to the coaching staff. Hey, coach, we talk a lot about mentality and, and culture here. It feels like we're really we started to see the dividends come out. Right, you guys are having one of your best the best starts of program history, actually, going mm -hmm. uh, eight zero, starting now nine zero and one. How is there ever a point where you're satisfied, where you say the culture is has yeah. hit, and you're, and you're like, we we've done it, or how does that? Just, how do you keep trying to improve, especially when it's really feeling good, right? You know, I, I hope that doesn't happen because I, it's just I, it's my feeling. I think that as soon as you think that's done and you just check that box and you relax, is when the cracks start to show up. So, I think that our leadership group, the experience that we've gone through the past year and a half, whatever prior to this two years, I, I think has been really beneficial to our leadership group and really understanding, like not just hear from from the administration or the coaching staff on why you need a good culture. Yeah. It's they went through it. They actually truly, truly understand it. And I don't think they're gonna check the box and go, okay, well, we're done now, let's focus on this. I just don't think they're gonna do that. And, and, and maybe if we didn't have that experience, maybe that would have happened, but I don't think it's gonna happen now. They understand, the great thing about it right now is, as I believe you, uh, I think it's starting to show up, but I think it's not because of what's said, it's, it's because of the lessons learned, it's because of what the team wants, not because of what the administration or the coaches want. You say it's starting to show up, what do you see? Because when you talk culture, yeah. it sounds esoteric and kind of hard to get your hands True. on it. Yeah. What, what, is there some tangible thing you see to say, okay, culture, positive? It's more of a feel than what you can see, but it's the feel in the locker room and the environment and how guys want to come to the rank and want to be around each other and the, the trust. The trust that the guys have in each other and the trust that the coaching staff has and administration has in the team. Like, that's the difference. It's really trusting everybody that they're doing the right things and then you can really enjoy yourself. If you're not sure, if it's a question, it's a whole different feel. And when you feel really good, that's what I mean about showing up on the ice. Like, it's winning and losing, especially in the Big Ten, is a very, very thin line. And you need every, you got to try to get every edge you can. And if you feel really good, that's a big, big edge. And I think that's what I mean by, I think you're starting to see that now. Coach, you've been talking about uh, being so here in this unique talent. I think you describe him as a cool cat. cat. Yeah, he's being, a cat, yeah. Yeah. So against teams like Michigan and now number one in Minnesota, do you think having someone of that demeanor in your goal yeah. kind of serves as a benefit? I do. And it's been a been a, a few years coming so I used to we used to not feel that way like we used to want like there's some goals that are just the most competitive we used to think those are the kind of guys 
And then the more we do it and do it at the highest level, I think it's the cool cats that in the end are the ones that, that, that come out on top more often. So yes, I think that's important. And another thing I'd ask you a little bit about is, is uh, the line within Daniel Lampra, Christian Sala, and Tyler Paquette. Mm -hmm. For them to continue the success they've been having, what's the key coming into this year? To not, not be content. And the way they have to do things is very, very physically demanding, and it's a mental preparation. Like, they, it's part of it is their stripes. Like, part of it, it has to be in you. You just can't pretend to play that way. It's a matter of their challenge is to be consistent night in, night out. Um, I can tell you that off the ice, all three of them are some of the finest, nicest, most polite, mannerful young men. Um, but they have to be the exact opposite on the ice. And sometimes that can be a challenge. What are you uh, looking forward to most in like, terms of matchups versus Joe versus Jacob? Hmm. Um, well, I'm not going to tell you exactly what we're looking at, but there's a couple things that, that cost us last year against them that I'm, what I, we're looking forward from a coaching staff perspective is to see if we've learned a lesson and if we've changed in those things. I'm not going to tell you what, you what they are, but I guess the answer is I'm looking forward to see if we've learned a lesson from last year. Uh, my favorite thing about Tour Linden is that he is uh, quiet strong. Sure. So, so the guys that, that often, like, I think that he's a quiet, he's, he's a, the cat's not the right word for him, but he's a very quiet, like, he's not a, you, you, you don't look at him and think that you're going to get physically overmatched because he's, he's very calm. He's quiet calm, yet, yet for some reason he overpowers you. Like, he, I don't mean to take this another way, but do you, are you an MMA fan? <laughs> Anybody here? So I'm not going to, uh, No. Oh, man. Okay, well, there's guys that go into the ring, and they're like, ah, and you're, like, intimidated a little bit. Ah, and then they, they be, and then there's other guys that go in, and they're just, and then they kick the living out of you. Okay? <laughs> Tour Linden's like that. He's, he's quiet, focused, even keeled, very calm, but, boy, is he tough on pucks. That's my favorite thing about him. Coach, I know we got a, I know we got a win from the fourth line, guys, at MMA last week. But going back to Xander, who didn't even really—he was told he was going to play center not long ago. And right. He's been so I had to look it up. Right. He's over sixty-two percent in yeah. face-offs. He's been phenomenal. Yeah. Obviously, you guys have chased with plenty of kind of work back. Here. Yeah. What happens, you know, for Xander, who I feel has played so well in the center position? Is you know, is it hard to want to maybe pull him out of that spot where he's been so good? And uh, you're one hundred percent correct. He's made it very difficult and a very nice problem to have. For the coaching staff, it was something that we were desperate, were desperate for, especially since Chase was out. But boy, has he made an incredible case for himself. I don't, I can't see how you move him. Mm -hmm. He's been awesome, awesome. And and you know what the funny thing is, is uh, he's not a centerman naturally. Yet it's funny if you look back to he played on the best team, the number one team in the USHL, and he ended up being center, taking a lot of draws for them. And I remember asking him when we was getting recruited. He goes, No, I'm not really a centerman, but they had me take some draws is what he said. And it's for interesting because the kind of guy he is, you can just see what he brings. So yes, it's a, it's an issue, but a very good issue to have. In terms of that mentality for players, whether it's quiet, strong, or polite, you flip on the switch, for you, is it easier to pull something out of someone or to, to rein them back in to get them focused? Um, uh, I think you always want, like, I think, Everybody, all the coaches, I think you want to, want to coach. You would much rather coach guys that you have to tell to settle down a little bit. But th th that's a different aspect of, of, like, you can be quiet and focused and still be a killer. Um, and that's what I'm talking about w w with him. Um, but he's, you don't have to kick him in the butt. I mean, just because he's quiet, that doesn't mean he's, he's not a killer. That's what I mean. Like, you don't have to... You don't have to get them going, but but I think what happens is when you're when you're when you're calm on the outside, I think you 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 have better focus. 
I think you're more trustworthy. You don't let your emotions get the best of you, yet you're still a stone cold performer. Um, and those are the, those are the best guys to coach. Time for a few more questions for Guy. Coach, getting back to Xander, talking about his, his face off production. I'm just curious, do you think there's anything that he specifically does that allows him to kind of excel so much? Or yeah. Kind of yes, guys? yes, he's super strong. Like super, super strong and heavy on the puck. Yeah, that's the reason. Final question for Guy? You know, Coach, going back to <clears throat> just the overall defensive structure, this could be another week where you guys are going to be playing one of the top offenses in yeah. the nation. You guys did fairly well scoring Michigan only four goals for GD. Can you just speak a little bit about how impressed you've been with your defense so far through the season, especially the three freshmen? That yeah, we, a really sure. Good yeah, we have been, and I think we saw originally from the from the first games on that um, that the freshmen are going to have a quicker transition than we might have thought. We believed in every one of them in terms of their talent, but there is a bit of a transition there. But all three of them have really come a long way in a short time. I think you have to give some of our veterans, probably Paul the Naples, number one, a lot of that credit to bring them along, but they have. And so for the numbers that you just mentioned, um, so far defensively, we're, we're happy with it, but it's, it's, it's a team thing too. Uh, so it's not just our defensemen and certainly not just our freshman defensemen and it's certainly not just our goalie, although he's been excellent as well. But we haven't given the forwards a lot of credit and, and we should because there's as much emphasis on, on defense to the forwards as the two groups that I mentioned previously. So it, it really has been a, an entire team effort. And I think if you're gonna keep teams like Michigan or a Minnesota, uh, at a minimum, you, you need everybody. You just can't have your D, just your goalies. Uh, you need everybody. And I think the last, at least the last um, two weekends for sure, that's that's been the case. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon.